my group, along with other people, we had a number of meetings, and we identified 50, about 50, I think the actual number was 46, depends on a little bit on quite how you count the last couple, but about 50 technical issues that had to be addressed in order for the plant to operate safely and effectively. We then went into a meeting on July 1st, the morning of July 1st, if I remember right, it was a Thursday, and presented the issues. There were some Bechtel managers in the meeting that tried to downplay the issues by saying these aren't issues, they're closed, they're done, they don't exist. Others in the room said no, they, you know, they do exist. There were other people in the room that would not let the issues be swept under the carpet, if you will, covered up. And I'm trying to understand what's going on, so very quickly, within the first few words, what's going on? And his answer is, give me your badge, give me your phone, give me your Blackberry. Frank Russo, the Bechtel project manager, wants you out of here. You have to leave the Hanford site. So here's a person, 40 years, 40, coming up on 41 years, done numerous things for the project, and they're treated like an absolute felon and run out of there. No excuse, no nothing. So I get escorted down to the door, to the front door, by the aide, the person filling in for the HR manager. And the door, you know, obviously I open the door and go out of it, and I figure I'll ask one more time, what's going on? And the answer was the same. Don't know, been told to do it, you got to get out of here, goodbye, good luck. And the door pulled shut and it was click. From there I started, I made phone calls, trying to find out what was going on, been moved into another job, now sitting in the basement of the building. Uh, in a room with two copying machines. One is the master copying machine. Uh, it's so loud I bought um, hearing protection that I wear, the red earmuffs that I wear when the machine's going so it doesn't beat your brains out. First, it's important to recognize that the WTP was the original Bechtel forecast was five billion dollars and it was going to take seven years to build, seven years to go from design to startup. The five billion is now over 12, and there are many rumors of it going up higher, another one or two billion on top of that, and the seven years has gone to 20. At this point today, neither DOE nor Bechtel nor URS can assure you of the safety or the operation, the throughput performance of the plant, despite nearly five billion dollars being spent. The management, it just, in my opinion, it, they did not want to hear that and the easiest thing to do to move ahead is to eliminate what's a potential roadblock. We'll get rid of them. Now, out on the Hanford site, we have 177 waste tanks that have exceeded their design life. A third of them, a third of them have leaked. They're beyond their design life, have leaked. What will happen with that material that's in the ground and whether it pollutes the river 100,000 years from now, I mean, is, is being studied. Not a good thing. WTP is being built for 40 years. So if the plant doesn't operate well and complete in 40 years, you got a problem. The plant has got to work well. Now on the smaller issues, getting to more discrete issues, if the tanks don't mix well, you could have a criticality. And a criticality is an uncontrolled nuclear reaction which in essence is like a, 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 what you have in a bomb. But the, the probability of a criticality occurring is low. I will acknowledge that. But 
the issue today is that that event, whether you could have it, not have it, how close you are to having one or not having one is being debated. And I would offer that in a $12 billion plant, the mixing should be made more robust, more vigorous, such that that item's not debated. I would offer again that this is huge and it's complex. I would also offer that I believe at this point the concerned folks, Department of Ecology, Department of Energy, the contractors and other stakeholder groups such as the Hanford Advisory Board, Defense Nuclear Facility Safety Board are all quite aware of what's occurring, quite aware of the challenges and we're working as best we can together to ensure that once this plant is built it will do what it's designed to do safely and efficiently and protect the citizens and the environment in the state. As a result of uh, Walter's termination from his position at the waste treatment plant uh, and him writing a letter uh, to the Defense Nuclear Facilities Safety Board, which is an oversight board uh, appointed by Congress to look at nuclear safety issues in defense facilities like at Hanford. Uh, an investigation was opened up uh, into his concerns, uh, followed soon thereafter by an investigation by the Department of Energy itself, which is the agency that owns the Hanford site and is the customer essentially for the uh, VIT plant or the waste treatment plant, uh, and, the, and finally by the Department of Energy's Office of Inspector General. And uh, since the conduct of uh, retaliating against an employee for raising safety concerns uh, is illegal and violates uh, several laws uh, in, including here in the state of Washington as well as uh, federal law uh, relating to uh, Occupational Safety and Health Administration and nuclear safety. Uh, complaints were filed uh, in those forum uh, as, as a matter of redress for, for Walter and uh, you know, to get him some justice uh, and to send a message that this kind of behavior won't be tolerated in a uh, large federal project uh, whose mission it is to protect the public health and safety down the road. Uh, this is a, a huge issue. It's one of the most important environmental remediation projects in the country uh, and in the world. It's one of the biggest, it's one of the most complicated, it's first of a kind. Uh, the stakes are very, very high, not only for present generations, but for future generations. Uh, and so we've got to get this right. We have a duty uh, to our uh, uh, to our species to make sure that radioactive materials like this are contained, controlled, uh, and put away uh, in places that don't affect, um, you know, our future. Because these contaminants uh, are known to cause mutations, uh, cancers, uh, etc. for long, long periods of times uh, in, in very, very minute qual uh, quantities. So uh, and we've got large quantities to deal with. So we can't get this wrong. We've got to get it right. We've got to get this waste in a form, a glass form, uh, and put away where it won't hurt people in the future. Uh, so there's a lot at stake here.